we will introduce the idea of constrained optimization using a graphical analysis with which you are very familiar. Here, even though the axes are not labeled, please go ahead and interpret the vertical axis as the price axis and the horizontal axis as the quantity axis. And please read these two curves as the demand curve and the marginal revenue curve. The broken or dotted line negatively sloped in the top panel is the marginal revenue curve, which slopes twice as steeply as the demand curve. Notice in the bottom panel, we have flipped the axes around so that we are starting on the right-hand corner. You notice the origin is on the bottom right-hand corner. And uh, assume that everything is labeled backwards, so it's as though you're looking through the back of the screen. So we have positively sloped curves here. But from the other side of the page, it would be a negatively sloped demand curve and the associated marginal revenue curve. Why do we do this? Well, we're trying to use the horizontal axis as the total quantity axis. And therefore, we're going to put the two demand curves back to back and have them create the horizontal axis as our quantity axis. And then we'll try to figure out the prices that should be charged to maximize revenue or profit depending on the nature of the problem given the constraint of the quantity being fixed at a particular level. The problem we're going to work on is the airline problem with two negatively sloped demand curves, a demand for tourists and a demand for business travelers. And the horizontal axis will represent the capacity of the plane, the number of seats that are available. And we're going to use the intersection of the two marginal revenue curves as the condition that maximizes total revenue. I'm going to move on from this unlabeled set of graphs to a set that you've seen, which are labeled. So here you'll see the setup for the two demand curves, again with the torus demand curve being drawn backwards. But the horizontal length, this is key, the horizontal axis would be the length of the capacity of the aircraft. And here we have two demand curves, and I show you where the two demand curves intersect where P subscript B is equal to P subscript T. And I show you the quantity of the allocation that would be determined by that equation of the two prices. We read this to say that when we charge the same price for both tourists and business travelers, the quantity allocation would be Q bar. And we would be showing the quantity from 0 QB to Q bar as the number of business travelers and the quantity from 0 QT to Q bar as the number of tourists at the common price. Notice that when we charge the same price for business and tourist passengers, the allocation at Q bar is not optimal in terms of maximizing the total revenue. Indeed, the marginal revenue from tourists would be higher than the marginal revenue from business passengers. Here we see that the marginal revenue for tourists is the higher number. The marginal revenue for business is the lower number. And what this means is that we can add more tourists and we would be making more revenue. We would then be trading off business passengers for tourists. And as we move the allocation from Q bar to Q star, we would be increasing the total revenue because we'd be moving to the point where the two marginal revenues are the same. Notice then that when the marginal revenues are equated, the price for tourists will be lower than the price for business passengers. But this is the best allocation because the two marginal revenue curves are equated. Q star then is the optimal allocation that maximizes revenue. Q bar is suboptimal. This graphical analysis is important, and I hope that you pay attention to it when you realize that we don't equate prices, we equate marginal revenues, and the prices fall out as a consequence. They're whatever they happen to be based on the relationship between the demand and the marginal revenue curves.